Hey friends, how you doing? Um, check out this set. I've got so many return tracks. Um, what I wanted to do today was explore some maybe non-conventional uses for return tracks that can actually help your mix sound awesome and different and really cool. Let's go ahead and take a listen to what's going on here, first of all. Yeah, so this is like an idea I had this morning, kind of like a cyberpunk future retro kind of sound. And yeah, so normally, maybe you'd listen to this mix and you'd say, well, the pad's too loud, bro. Or, you know, turn this up, turn that down. Uh, there's too many low mids in the mix. Yeah, I agree. But sometimes it's good to break outside of the box of your classic mixing moves that you do and try some new stuff. So first of all, let's listen to this again and pay attention to the drums. So what I'm noticing is that the drums sound rather buried, and maybe your first move is to just turn the drums up, which is fine. You could do that if you wanted to. But what I wanted to show you is something cool. So I've got a good amount of, I mean, all <laughs> I've got all the drums. I've got the full amount of this send being sent to a vocoder. What? A vocoder? All right, so check this out. So let's just listen to the drums. So listen to what happens when I turn this vocoder up. So what the vocoder is doing is it's listening to the drums and I've got this curve drawn here that just kind of has the higher frequencies being played through the vocoder and, and the carrier is noise, right? So, so all I'm doing is I'm adding a, a layer of noise that I can EQ whenever a drum hit happens, right? And there's a lot of control here. So one thing I can do is make it last longer. And this depth control does some pretty cool stuff. It kind of like changes the envelope. Formant also kind of changes the EQ. Here, I'll, I'll just turn this absurdly loud so you can hear it. So how this can be useful is you can kind of design like the initial transients of maybe dark sounding drums to get them a little brighter, right? So. Oh, that's nice, right? All right, so let's set this up from scratch. I'm gonna grab a vocoder, drop it in here. I've already got my sends for my drum track turned all the way up, right? I'm gonna click enhance. That is, that's gonna make the drum sound a bit brighter. That's just how it goes, right? So let's just listen to the output of the vocoder. That's pretty cool. But I'm gonna turn the lows out because I just wanna get some brighter brighter sounds going. So as you can see, you can draw in these, these curves and you can also change the bands. Maybe we could go with 16 bands for now. Okay, so now I just have 16 bands. Let's listen to this. You can also change the range. So maybe I want some brighterness. So I'm gonna turn the range up. So listen, right as I turn it down, listen. See? <laughs> cool, so now we got some brighter sounds. Let's try to change the format. Maybe the depth. Okay, cool. Now let's turn this all the way down and just listen to the drums. Now I can blend this back in till I like it. Okay, so let's listen to the drums with the rest of the mix with this off and on, okay? So here's it with off. Turn it on. Now, so what I'm hearing is there's some things I'd like to change about this. Maybe I've got too much of this frequency in there, right? So I'm gonna turn this one down a little bit. Awesome. Let's turn this off. Right? And you can always mess with the release. Like it's releasing a little bit long, maybe something like 80. Let's try that. Mm -hmm. 
right? So that's just a great way to get your drums, especially if you have dark sounding samples that you're using to just kind of like be more present right at the smack of it, right? That's the, another way to enhance the transients you could think of, right? Okay, so moving right along, let's go to this overdrive. That's a weird thing to put in a return track. Well, let's go ahead and take a listen to this song again, and maybe we'll listen to the bass. Let's listen to it in context with everything else. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn up this overdrive. So what I did is I slapped an overdrive in here, and I got the drive all the way up and the dry wet all the way up, right? Whenever we're using return tracks, there's no reason to have any of the dry signal coming through, right? So 100% is really what you want here because I don't want to just turn the bass up. If I had this at 50 and I cranked some bass into this return track, then I would hear some dry signal bass. We don't want that. We just want 100% wet signal whenever we're using returns, all right? So let's go ahead and, and take a listen to this bass as I turn up this overdrive track. Now what's nice about that is this is a harmonic distortion. So it's gonna raise up those harmonics and you're gonna hear maybe more of those harmonics. You're gonna hear more of the bass when you're listening on a cell phone or on a computer and so on. So let's go ahead and listen to this and I'm gonna turn this up slowly as we listen to this in the mix, right? So. Now, wow, that's just, that's so powerful. I, I mean, I barely added any in there. It was still at negative 20 and I can hear it really well. So sometimes it's nice to just maybe go back to the bass track and turn it down just a little bit, maybe a couple dB. And then I'll turn this up a little bit and I'll get maybe more of those distortion tones, right? So. Pretty wild stuff, right? Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So here's a glue compressor that's totally turned all the way up, right? So I've got, I've got it totally turned. I've got the threshold all the way down. So it's just smashing audio, right? I've got the attack all the way down. The release is almost all the way down. The ratio is all the way up with soft clip turned on, right? So this is as max as it can be. I haven't turned the, the makeup gain up because this is kind of immaterial depending upon what's going into it, right? So I'm just gonna leave it like around plus 12. So what I've got is I've got a bunch of drums being sent into this. Let's go ahead and listen to this. Just the drums. Now let's go ahead and listen to the glue compressor. It's just smashing the drums, right? In fact, I'll just drive it all the way. Now because the attack is so low, the compressor is gonna smack those drums down right away. So the initial snap of the drums is buried, right? But what is being brought up is the sustain of the drums, right? So this is gonna actually bring up the, the you know classic like tennis ball, smacking a tennis ball in a tennis court effect, right? So what I'm doing is I'm gonna add sustain to the drums by turning up this glue compressor, okay? Let's take a listen to just the drums and then I'm gonna turn this up slowly. Right? Here, you know what? I'm even gonna turn this reverb off for now just so that we can really hear what this is doing. Right? Now let's, let's, let's just A-B it. Right, this is just a way to add some sustain. So let's A, B it with the mix. Nice, so it's just a little bit, makes the drums thicker, okay? 
So real quick, I just wanted to take this time to tell you that I'm creating Ableton online courses. They'll be covering macro topics like mixing, sound design, composition, songwriting, live performance, and more. I should say you can learn anything you want to learn off of YouTube, but a lot of the time it's hard to find exactly what you're looking for. These courses will be thorough, optimized, and organized to help you take your skills to the next level quickly. At the time of this video, I've almost finished the songwriting and composition course. Uh, and I've just begun on the mixing course. And once the mixing course is finished, I'm going to launch this. So we're talking probably a month or two from being launched. So if you want to be notified when these courses are available, click on the link in the description or in the comments and put your email on there so I can let you know when these courses are ready. I'm really excited about this. I think this is going to be totally groundbreaking. All right, let's get back to it. Here's a frequency shifter. This is one of my favorite tricks. Okay. I've got a frequency shifter without, I'm not changing this frequency here, I'm just changing the spread, okay? And I've got a little bit of LFO going on, and I've got it set on the wide setting. And remember, the dry wet is all the way up. So, I am now sending a little bit of this pad through here. So this is the pad without it. So I'm going to turn this up. kind of like a chorus, right? It's pretty cool. So if I turn this up, it gets kind of wackier and faster, right? Now, if you change the LFO here, this is cool because it'll kind of change the spread amount over time and you can get kind of like some movement going on. So every hit of this uh, pad will sound different, right? This is just kind of a fun effect to put on a return track and have a little bit of wiggly fun, right? Now, isn't that cool? Every single hit has a different, like a differing kind of like wiggle to it, right? All right, so moving on. Redux. Okay, Redux is really cool, and Redux doesn't have its own dry-wet knob. Now, there's a way as an insert to put it in an insert track and make a dry-wet knob, but in this case, I just decided to put it on a return track and I'm feeding some of the drums into it, right? So let's go ahead and take a listen to the drums. And I'll go ahead and put this reverb back on because this is, you know, one of the fun things about Redux. So let's listen to what the Redux channel is doing. <laughs> So essentially this is, you know, it's a down sampler and a bit reducer, but you know, what's so great about that is you can achieve some of those, uh, the bright aliasing bad sound of the top end kind of is like an essential sound of lo-fi music, right? So, you know, if you want to get into making lo-fi music, one, a great tool is using Redux. So you can choose either soft or hard in here. And either one of these is a great thing. You can just dial in kind of like a really fun sound and blend it into the rest of your mix. So let's try to find something we like. Oh, that's nice. Let's go ahead and turn the drums all the way up here. So now let's listen without it and we're going to bring it in slowly. Try to mess with these controls a little bit. So yeah, without it, and with it. And notice how it adds this kind of like like air to the drums. Like it almost opens up the top. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's kind of a shitty opening up of the top, but it sounds nice, you know? In a lot of ways, it's kind of like the vocoder, right? It's adding like this bright top end, okay? So let's move on to this next one. This one's kind of weird, but why not? Let's check it out. So on this ARP kind of thing I got going on. In another video, I was talking about using Corpus as a reverb, and you can kind of like tune the reverb or the, you know, in this, in this way, it's kind of like a really fast delay with a lot of feedback. So it gets kind of that like robot-y kind of buzzy kind of sound, but check this out. And so you have like a decay control. And you also have a filter, so you can kind of, you know, dial it in, right? So let's listen to this without it and with it. So 
without it. And with it. Now you might like this sound, you might not. This is kind of yet another way to make some like lo-fi kind of sounds. Like, you know, when you add this, it, it kind of thickens up and gives it kind of like some spikes and some weird mid-ranges. And it causes kind of like a tapey kind of sound, you know what I mean? Like kind of like what a tape would do if you recorded over it too many times, right? I really like this this sound and I really like what it does for this specific track. So without it, with it. So moving on to the last one, I've got an erosion in there and I've got wide noise mode turned up, okay? So let's go ahead and take a listen. We're still listening to this kind of ARP thing, right? Now, what this is going to do, erosion is just basically an envelope follower for noise, right? So it listens to what's coming into it, and it spits out noise, uh, different types of noise, based on the input signal. So let's go ahead and listen to this. Oh, it's kind of like hi-hats. Whoa, right? So then, again, with, with the interest of, you know, let's take both of these effects down a little bit and listen to this mix. This ARP kind of gets buried, right? So... But if I turn this erosion up... Right? It kind of gets featured. Let's try it on a different instrument. Let's try it on this bass. So this bass has kind of got some... Some, uh, it, it sticks out a bit. I'm gonna turn this up pretty high, okay? And we'll turn this down. Let's go ahead and listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, if you wanna make kind of like a, a dirtier or a grimier sound, erosion is a great thing to reach for. Um, let's go ahead and, and maybe take a listen to the whole mix with and without this, so. I'm gonna add it. Awesome. So you can tune it by like moving this around. I know I have a I haven't went over this black hole reverb, but I mean this this thing's just awesome. I mean just listen. So black hole's a reverb and, and and you know normally you use reverb and delay on return tracks. This is just kind of showing you some weird stuff you can do with return tracks. So let's go ahead and select all these and I'll turn them off. Okay, and let's listen to the difference this made. So here's our mix before. There's just not that much life, you know. There could be some more fun stuff going on. Right, so here's with our changes. So I know that's <laughs> I know that some of these effects are kind of extreme, but you know a lot of people end up watching these videos on their phones. So I just wanted to make sure that you could hear these differences that are being made. You know, normally I wouldn't blend as much of these effects into this mix as you see here, but I wanted to make these extreme to make sure that you could that you could hear these differences that are being made. Um, so yeah, if you like this kind of thing, please like, comment, and subscribe. Much love, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.